Hi, everybody. This is Anna Hackman from Green Sisterhood, and I'm here with Karen Lee, also of Green Sisterhood. Hi, there. And, and Ed Brown of an Unacceptable Levels. And he's the director of the movie, and he's going to be talking to us about his movie and the things that he found out in his movie, the, how toxic our world is. So I'm going to put Ed up on the screen. I'm going to take myself down. Hi, Ed. Welcome. Hi. Thank you so much. I appreciate you for having me, Anna and Karen. So Hi, we, what we want to talk to you about is your movie. I mean, I both Karen and I watched it. It was extremely compelling. And your story is really interesting. Like, how did you start making a movie like this? And tell us, okay, let's back up. Tell us what the movie's about first. <laughs> okay, sure, sure. The, the movie is about low-dose exposures of toxic chemicals that we have in all of our bodies. And that means each and every one of us. Uh, not, not a single person in this entire country or, or on this planet uh, is outside of this problem. So knowing that this is the biggest uh, issue that we may have ever faced as an entire civilization and as an entire people, uh, this is something that I thought was really uh, a pretty good <laughs> premise for a film. Um, to, and you know, this is also a problem not everybody is talking about at this point. So that's really what uh, you know. And, and of course, my own personal experience that came into this. My wife had uh, two miscarriages out of three pregnancies, and usually, whenever you have a personal issue like that, that is the catalyst for a story like this. And that's really what brought everything together. Was my personal uh, issue at home, and then I started asking questions about what is really going into all of us, and how can all of these toxic chemicals exist in our bodies, and they, and they all do, and, and what that could be doing to us in the long run. So what was the most surprising things that you found out while doing this film? Uh, well, that you know, number one, uh, that um, you know, it doesn't matter what age you are, it doesn't matter what race you are, uh, it doesn't matter what your, eth you know, your ethnicity or your creed or your religious background or anything like that. This is the one thing that we all have in common are toxic chemicals inside of ourselves. And so how they get into us is a really interesting aspect of this film that I explored with a lot of great experts out there. Uh, and you, basically we've got four areas where chemicals get into us uh, every second of the day. That's from the air we breathe, the, the food we eat, the water we drink, and what we put on our skin. And so those were the – and, you know, I, I'd been eating organically for about 10 years, but I didn't know anything about skincare products. I didn't even think twice about water, and I certainly didn't think about any of the products that were off-gassing that I was cleaning with or, or that were just you know materials that I bought and, and furniture and stuff like that that I put into my house. I didn't know anything about flame retardants. And uh, so this, is, this was a really big learning process for myself, and after four years from beginning to end, that, that's how long it took to, to create this film. I feel like I should have a degree up on the wall at, 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 or something to – that, that signifies that I, I know something about this subject at this point. So when you were going through this, like you said that you know you knew food, because you actually talked about that you worked in a restaurant for a lot of years, oh, yeah. so you, you knew about the food aspect. The part that really struck me was all the levels that you went through, like you talked about how, you know, how chemicals have really made our life easier, but at the same respect, they've made our lives harder. So explain that a little bit about that, because you know, people are going to say, well, I can't do this. I can't live in a plastic bubble. Right. Yeah, and, and, and that certainly isn't an expectation that anybody should have either. Um, you know, I think the one thing that we all need to keep in mind is that it took us 100 years to get into this problem, and, and you know, 100 years ago, um, disease uh, were, was really ravaging us uh, as, a, as a people and we needed to combat that in, in a lot of ways. Uh, po you know, polio, smallpox, influenza, I mean these are things which were very detrimental to us as an entire species and we got a hold on that for the most part and, uh, and we still struggle with, uh, with influenza today but, uh, but, but disease in that way was, was really what was hindering us and now we have this massive you know, explosion as far as our population is concerned, and a trade-off came with that that we didn't anticipate. Um, chemicals, as they're overused now, and then they're used in every single aspect of our society. I mean, there isn't anything that we do, any part of any day, that doesn't have any, something to do with chemicals. It's the absolute backbone of our entire economy. And knowing that, um, that that's the case, okay, we understand it. And I'm not asking anybody to live in a plastic bubble. I mean, that's one thing that most people would think that, you know, what am I supposed to do now? I'm terrified, and I, now I feel like I can't even exist, and, and I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. 
But th that's the last thing in the world we need anybody to do. We just need people to acknowledge that there's a problem uh, and, and, and create. We need to work together to create a plan. And it's going to take decades to get ourselves out of this. There's absolutely no question of that. So if you were to start creating a plan now, I mean, you've given your movie is very educational. It walks through all the different aspects of what we're doing from our water. You know, you mentioned fluoride. You mentioned, you know, uh, pharmaceuticals, the plastics, everything that you mentioned. It was it was very educational, and I have to t just give you a little, t you know, a little um, kudos. It wasn't overbearing. And I think whenever you create a film, I I, I really do think that a lot of filmmakers. Uh, especially documentary filmmakers do themselves and everybody a disservice. I think I think that uh, most films, uh, the, the backbone premise of almost every documentary that's made today is that uh, corporations are greedy. They're doing stuff to hurt people. They do hurt people, and then we have a government that's not doing anything about it, and then people covering up everything. I mean, that that really sums up almost every documentary that's <laughs> produced today. And I, you know, and so I sat back and said, instead of instead of my saying, let's go get the torches and pitchforks and go after Monsanto and DuPont and BASF and Cargill and all these horrible companies. Instead of doing that, I sat back and said, "Let's. I'm going to create a film that lays out a problem. I don't blame anybody for the, for the situation that we're in, um, but we are in the situation. Blame isn't going to do us any good. So what we need to do collectively to create a plan is a step-by-step -step process that we can enact immediately meaning the products that we're bringing into our home and that we're putting into ourselves, those are things that we have control over right now, today, without talking about legislation, without talking about regulation. So those are the things that I'm going to do immediately for myself. And then we're going to try to create more awareness and then the people that are in high positions in our government and also corporations. We have to expect that Monsanto and DuPont and these other companies are not going to disappear overnight. They need to be part of the solution as well, and I invite them to do that. This, so I'm trying to be a different kind of filmmaker and also to be a different kind of activist where I sit back and I'm not sitting back and saying, let's take down the, these horrible corporations. I'm saying they need to be part of the solution along with us. They need to understand there's a problem, and a lot of them do. And so now with this kind of new paradigm that we can start this conversation, hand-in-hand -hand collaborative effort between corporations, government, and ourselves, we can make a difference. I know it's possible. But I think like the key thing that you said that was really important was education because a lot of people really don't know. You know, We just assume, because we've been in this for over a decade, both Karen and I, that people know all these things and they just don't. I mean, the average person has no idea of all the chemicals that are, that are in their bodies. Yeah, everybody's really busy and I, I completely understand that. Um, and, and, and trying to get them to understand that, you know, and, and I go back to, tell me, I always ask people the same question, tell me somebody in your family or a friend of yours or anybody who isn't on some, on some kind of medication right now, and, or who isn't sick with something. It's very difficult for people to, to even reel off one person, let alone themselves, And whenever I ask them that question. And why we're all sick, maybe it's not that mysterious after all. And knowing that our bodies are being, they're very, very strong. Our bodies are really, really great mechanisms for detoxification um, and getting these types of compounds and synthetic compounds out of our bodies. But when they're overwhelmed every single moment of the day, that creates a scenario that is the body burden and that makes it very difficult for the body to really keep up with that at every moment, every step of the way. I mean, if you had... If we, if, you know, women before they walk out of the house, you know, put 163 synthetic chemicals on average uh, on their skin before they walk out of the house in the morning, uh, before they go to work or go to school or anything like that. So if you do that every single day, uh, if you did it one day, your body would be really good at getting those chemicals out of it. But when you do it every single day and it's a constant barrage, it, so some things can, you know, go awry and, and you can bust a spring and somewhere inside of your body at a molecular level, and uh, and that's what we're trying to prevent. So if you were going to give someone an action plan, what are some of the things that you would tell them how to reduce their body burden? Like where would they go to find these products, or where would they go look for the education? Give us like, you know, kind of a, a little road map here. Sure. What are you going to eat today? I always ask them that. What are you going to eat? Right. Think about what you're eating, and think that, you know, what my taste buds are telling me is that something's making me feel really good. And then hours later, I don't feel good physically. And so whenever I sit back and say, think about what you're going to be putting in your mouth. What are you going to eat? What are you going to drink? Are you going to drink water that has, you know, over 200 
chemicals in it, even if it's bottled water? Uh, it, it, does that mean that you'd rather do that than have it another way? And what you're putting onto your skin, do you want to know what's in it or do you not want to know what's in it? I mean, some people like to turn a blind eye to this and try to think that it's out of sight, out of mind, what doesn't kill me makes me stronger. That couldn't possibly be further from the truth on this issue. You know, what doesn't kill you right now could very well do that in 20 years. And I know we're all, we're all destined for that end result. But I think all of us want it to be later rather than sooner, and especially for our kids. So I sit back and say, what are you going to eat, drink, breathe, and put on your skin today? Let's think about those areas. Because those are things right now, starting at this moment, you can have control over. And then we can start writing to politicians. Then we can start you know, leveraging some more influence over, over companies and stuff like that. But those types of steps are necessary. To, and, and also, more so over than anything else, Tell your friends and family that this might there might really be something here. This is worth a this is a conversation worth having between each and every one of us. Uh, and and you know this isn't indoctrination to our kids about environmentalism or or green anything. This is a very real problem. And and, and so, I mean, it, it shouldn't have, carry a stigma of environmentalism or it's a blue issue. This is a blue, red, purple, white, black, green issue. This is everybody's issue. And that so as far as an action plan is concerned, what are you going to eat, drink? Breathe and put on your skin today. Think about those four areas, and then you can make some decisions on your own. You know, I just wanted to give a quick shout out because it, it happens to be, and this wasn't planned. I don't know if you know that there's a lot of like Clean Moms uh, Air Forces on the hill oh, yeah. today, and Safer Chemicals are out there on their stroller brigade. This wasn't a planned date, but it really is a great. Um, you know that we actually are interviewing you this because we're talking about the very topics that those women and men are on the hill protesting for safer chemicals and you know when you talk about this the plan of action like, out of curiosity since you've been doing this for four years how's it changed your life and the people around you what kind of conversations have you been noticing cropping up around you you know it used to be that I would tell people about what I learned whenever I'd go and interview somebody new I'd come back to the central PA and then I talk to people about it, and they would just be like, "Oh God, this again," you know. And they they roll their eyes and be like, "Oh God, Ed, you know, I can't hear anything else," you know. And then a couple years go by, and now I have the same people coming back to me and saying, "You know, maybe there was something to this, and maybe you were right about that, and maybe maybe and it's not the not not myself that's right. It's about what the research is and the science that's coming out, and how this is a major issue that's coming up in the media almost every single day." In, in, uh, in major media outlets from the USA Today to Fox News. Um, and so whenever more and more people are talking about this, that, then the reality starts to sit in that maybe I wasn't crazy and maybe all these people that have been doing this hard work for decades, maybe, they're, maybe they are right about this. And so something like the Stroller Brigade, I love it. Moms Clean Air Force, Safer Chemicals, Healthy Families, Healthy Child, Healthy World, uh, you know, Green Sisterhood. Every, I mean, this is an amazing outpouring of emotion and definitely – to get women engaged in this issue is really what's going to turn the tide. Uh, and I, I know that, that getting women behind us um, is really the most important aspect of, of change here in, in, the, in the Beltway and across the country. Because we buy all the products. That's, that's right. right. That's right. <laughs> you know? We buy all the products. We do the <laughs> grocery shopping. We go to the pharmacy when someone's sick. And, uh, yeah. and like your wife, um, you know, we're the ones with miscarriages and all the horrible things that happen. Um, you know, that trickle down, you know, to, to the kids. But, um, I, you know, one thing that I actually was uh, impressed with your film, I mean, everything obviously was, you know, uh, great. <laughs> but the ending was, I thought, was um, one of the best moments because most of these documentaries tell you what's wrong with this world and how you're going to die miserably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, right. And what's wrong with this world, right? But it turns the table around to make it your problem, you know, right. so that um, so that you're the one who has the power to do something about it and not pounding on the, co the corporations and, you know, like you said, um, you know, trying to destroy them. But you turned the table around, and I thought that was really, really uh, important. Right. Oh, thank you, Karen. I really appreciate that. I mean, whenever it says your turn up on screen, it really does mean just that. Um, because we can't just sit back and complain our way out of this issue. Um, I really don't think that that's going to be an effective use of our time. And time is of the essence for all of us. Who sure. know, you, you know who is susceptible of getting cancer? Everybody. Right. So we're all 100% at 
it could possibly be 100% all of us could, could get it. No, but how your life is going to work out in the end and, and how we all want to prevent disease from happening in the first place, I'd say that you know trying to keep as many bad things out of your out of your body and out of this amazing system, um, it couldn't be more important. Um, and I think that one other caveat that I'd add to that, whenever I say that it's your turn, um, that doesn't mean um, just you know just shopping our way out of this either. I mean we have to. It, it, it's an all. You know you got to get a lot of oars in the water to get the dry land here, and it's going to take an awful lot of effort across the board in a lot of different ways. Uh, to make this happen, um, but you know, I always go back to the analogy of you know we we as a as a people managed to punch a hole in the ozone the size of Antarctica, uh, but then we fixed it uh, with, with CFCs and, and and getting rid of CFCs. We're capable of doing horrible things and we're capable of doing amazing things, and that's the beauty part of of hum the human experience. We we really have the capacity. To do the right thing here, and um, and I know we will, you know. I have a question on a personal level. Sure. Four years of your life. How did you know, you know, you know, to go to the right people to ask the right questions? I mean, this is a very well done documentary. Oh, thank you. It's I'm not always... like it's not like this is your like your original background, and you went to school for this, and all of a sudden you said, "Hey, I'm going to put this together." No, I you know there were a lot of times, and, and I I got to be honest with you, a lot of times where I felt like I don't really know what I'm doing, and I have no idea where this is going or where this is headed. Um, uh, there were at least a year and a half in, uh, I was meeting so many amazing people, and one person really led to the next. Um, whenever I would, I met Tim LaSalle, who at the point at the time whenever I interviewed him, he was the CEO of the Rodeo Institute. And then he put me in touch with Warren Porter, and then Warren Porter put me in touch with John Stauber, and and, and it really snowballed from there. And and you know it, it's really great this outpouring of of and this great reaction that I had from people because I was just by myself with my camera, going to these great locations all across the world and and filming people you know with my tripod and and my my camera, and it probably seemed a little strange uh, because I don't have a, a massive film crew. It was just me. Uh, but I think that the intimate nature of, of meeting people and getting to know them, and I really worked hard on establishing relationships and understanding the problem in the best way possible, that really educated myself to, in, to a capacity where I could carry on this conversation with the top experts or just lay people as well. And, uh, and I think that, that's, that, that, you know, that communal effect really took place, and it really felt good to know that I was educating other people that, Knew a lot about flame returns, but didn't know a lot about pesticides. Uh, you know, uh, some people knew a lot about toxic sludge, but didn't know anything about fluoride. And you know, I thought it was interesting that, uh, in, this, in this collaborative fashion, that people were, uh, you know, I was educating them as much as they were educating me at one point. So I thought are that there, was cool. Are there any topics that you wish you included in the film that um, you just couldn't um, fit them in, or or things that you realized afterwards? Yeah, Will there be a I, sequel? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. There is a sequel, as a matter of fact. Uh, it's called Genetically Modified Movie. No. Um, <laughs> oh, boy. So, yeah, well, right. And, you know, I, I thought that that was a really good... Uh, it, it, I only mentioned it very, very briefly in, the, in Unacceptable Levels, uh, and I did not know everything about uh, transgenic agriculture or transgenic uh, uh, manipulation whenever it comes to cells uh, or bacteria or anything like that. So I thought that it was... Uh, you know, it, I tried to do vaccines, uh, which I thought was another aspect of chemical uh, inputs that were really important to, to talk about. Um, I had to cut for, for time for the film, but it is up on the YouTube channel um, that I have for the, for the website. And, uh, you know, so genetically modified foods and stuff like that, I really wish I would have had more time for it because it, it's such a hot topic. But then I thought, hey, why don't I just make another film altogether? There you go. On that, right? You'll never run out of materials, I'm sure. No, no, no. There, there, there's Unfortunately. No yeah, that, that's a fact. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there were things like I, I didn't talk about like uh, like BPA. I didn't talk about a lot of really specific chemicals. Mm -hmm. Um. The, even the though it will be like 24 hours long. Yeah. Right? right. I mean, I would I would have a mini series that would have it would have been longer than Roots, so it would have been tough to <laughs> to get that thing up there, you know. Roots. Yeah. But um, I'm, I am hoping that there will be a movie with, you know, with positive hope and um, things that have changed since, your, you know, since Unacceptable Levels and 
things that people have done to make our lives better. To, to yeah. hope. Yeah, me too. I, you know, if we don't have hope, and it's not just a campaign slogan. I think it really became that with Obama. Not that not not that I'm deriding him for any, as far as his PR or marketing for the for his campaign. I'm just saying, you know, I think hope has turned into a word that just feels like it's just a word now. If we didn't have that, if we didn't really have that emotion to cling on to, uh, most people wouldn't do anything, and we did just clam up and, and really not be receptive to a message like this. And and I think that that's the one overriding factor, even though it can be a little overwhelming. Uh, when you watch the film at 76 minutes, um, which it really isn't as long as a lot of other documentaries right. out there, but no, <laughs> yeah, I tried to pack as much information into the 76 minutes as I could, and I also wanted to definitely give everybody the impression that you know we got a long way to go, but we'll we'll do it. You know, we can, we can, we can do anything we want to do collectively, individually, and um, and I and I do feel like that that's really important to give people that sense when they but walk out of the theater. Watching your family and your adorable kids running around definitely helped because that, <laughs> no, seriously, because that really gives you hope that, you know, this is what we're fighting for. Right. And this is why it matters. Right. Absolutely. Right. So how, what, have you seen any outcome of, from your movie of any corporations starting to talk more to you or, or other people about what's going on? Have you seen any, like, rippling, change. Like, rippling change? Yeah, you know, whenever you get a letter, uh, a press release, as a matter of fact, from Senator Vitter, who is uh, co-authoring the Chemical Safety Improvement Act. Um, you know, whenever you get a letter from from him uh, deriding the film as being nothing but scaremongering, and uh, you know, I think that the, you you're rattling some cages, and and that's certainly not the intention, but that's what that's the effect that it, that it had. I think that uh, I think that. A lot of companies in the in the American Chemistry Council and Senator Vitter himself, um, you know, typically they're on the defensive at this point. I asked all of them to be a part of the film, and they declined. Um, you know, the Personal Care Products Council was another one I was really close with, and EPA as well. I, I tried to interview them, and they they also said no. And you know, what can you do at that point? I gave it a shot. And I tried. I wanted. And I thought it was really important to include their voices into this because they should certainly be able to defend themselves and be part of the conversation. Um, so Vitter called out Linda Birnbaum um, of the National Institute of Health because she was speaking on a panel in Washington, D.C. a couple weeks ago as the film was screening and really making it clear that she shouldn't be supporting this film, quote-unquote. And she wasn't supporting it, but she was certainly suggesting that as the director of the National Institute of Health, it's, it's, it's about time we start recognizing that toxic chemicals in our bodies are a serious problem and we need to bring more attention to it. That's really what she was getting across. That's, that's, uh, that's huge. Yeah, yeah, and Linda was amazing. She was a very affable woman and I really liked meeting her for the first time. And uh, again, she's, you know, she's got a, an or, a wing of the government that has nearly a billion dollars as far as its budget's concerned. And, uh, and, and whenever they're recognizing that this is an issue, uh, I think that, that uh, that's a real reason for all of us to start taking notice as well. So where can people watch your film? Yes. Right now, if they want to go watch the film, they can go to naturalnews.com, and they can find the, uh, the link that's going to be up there, and it's available at the moment. You can go onto our website and look under our screenings page, and hopefully uh, they can find a screening that is close by, or they could set up their own screening, that is. Um, or... They can wait a couple weeks, and we're going to start a new dynamic distribution platform where we're going to be uh, getting the film out in conjunction with a lot of uh, bloggers, nonprofit groups, and uh, also other organizations and companies uh, that are going to be making the film available online. Uh, and then it will be in, and also for sale on DVD, and that starts November 7th. And also, uh, we're going to have big box distribution that takes place in 2014. Uh, so, like Whole Foods and stuff like that, will have the DVDs available then. Uh, but if you want to watch it right now today, and hopefully you do, go to naturalnews.com and you'll be able to find a link, and um, and then you can watch it right now. And I hope you do. <laughs> Are you going to be speaking uh, um, at TED Talks or anything like that in the future and screen, you know, hold a screening? I hope so. I, I haven't heard from them yet, but uh, you know, I, I look. I mean, TED Talks. Uh, Bioneers, you know, uh, Expo West and East. I mean, those are the types of places that are certainly 
um, eager to have this kind of content available to them. So yeah, there's no doubt about it. Uh, over the next couple months, we'll be we'll be trying to set up those things accordingly. Sure. Great. Great. Yeah. So keep us apprised of of uh you know your future what future things are going on, um with your film, yeah. and uh you know we'll put it on on the website um our Facebook page as well, because you know what you're doing is really fantastic. Like I have to say, it really was a wonderful film. It really was entertaining to watch, and it wasn't heavy, and you got your message across. So I kudos. Hey, to you too. The Green Sisterhood is awesome, by the way. Everything <laughs> I was looking at, I mean, you're doing a lot of hard work and. You got your We're feet trying. on the ground. Absolutely. Yeah. We have a wonderful group of women. You know, they yeah, really they, they have the uh, amazing heart and you know, every day is is they're educating the public like you and like I said, you know, we're very fortunate. Very fortunate. Yeah, I absolutely. And and I you know, as a guy, as a man, I sit back and I say, Look, green I, dude. I, I, I'm I'm all for We have green all, dudes. <laughs> you got green bros. Dudes? Green bros. <laughs> oh man, sweet. All right, cool. <laughs> Yeah, we actually we just we have quite a few green bros, so you can be our one of our green bros. Hey, I'm, well, we I'm really, in. Let, let, let we me really appreciate up. you coming because I know you're a very busy man, and yes. we tried to get you in the beginning when the film came out, and you were all over the all over the country, you know, going on red carpets, and I'm I, I regret not you know running into you <laughs> on any of them, but I'm really glad that you were able to uh, come on board and. We're gonna put all your information down on our website with you know with the with the info about the film. And anytime uh, any kind of updates happen, we'll add it and edit it. So um, we'll keep. Well, in thank touch. you, ladies. That's yeah. fantastic. Thank you. And, you know, I was actually on a green carpet as well in, in Nashville, cool. uh, where it was made out of uh, moss and grass, and uh, it was the first, uh, you know, completely biocompostable carpet uh, to wow. uh, walk into a movie screening. I, I thought it was awesome. It is that, awesome. That's what, they, that's what they should give you everywhere you go. I agree. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> I think you should bring your own, actually. <laughs> yeah, Just in yeah. case they don't have it. <laughs> it would be tough to check that at the airport, but I, 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 well, I'll see what they think about it. They'll be like, what, the, what is this? You know, <laughs> hey, you can be you know, educating those TSA guys, too. That's right. Yeah. They could use it. Absolutely. Be sure. <laughs> um, next week, everybody, we have Sass Brown, who we're going to be talking about ethical fashion just right in time for you know, sh uh, Christmas shopping. So it's a great timely um piece that we're going to be doing with her and we will see you at two o'clock East Coast time next time same place same channel Google Plus and uh, hope to see you there thanks Ed nice nice meeting you pleasure is all mine ladies thank you okay. so much take care take care you got it